Hey everyone, welcome back to another video by AppSec Engineer. So this video is actually from one of our upcoming courses called Dash with Jenkins, where we look at multiple strategies on how one can go about and implement dynamic application security testing tools as part of their Jenkins pipelines. I'm going to be running this entire lab on the AppSec Engineer lab portal. So all of the prerequisites that I typically need to run a lab are automatically taken care of. I'm going to walk you through running an OWASP Zap Scan, which by the way is my favorite open source Dash tool, by leveraging the Zap plugin that's available on Jenkins. We're going to start off by launching our target application as a container, and then we're going to look at configuring the OWASP Zap plugin. And finally, we're going to run a quick scan and generate our scan reports. Let's get started. <laughs> If this is the sort of content you'd like and enjoy, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel and also like the video. We're also active on LinkedIn and Twitter where we're going to be constantly posting updates around Kubernetes security, cloud security, AppSec, DevSecOps, and a whole lot more. So now that we've installed and configured the official OWASP Zap plugin, let's go ahead and create a new item. So I'm going to click on new item and I'm going to name this Zap plugin. And this is going to be a freestyle project. Once that is done under description, I'm just going to write in using Zap plugin to run a spider scan. Once complete, we can directly scroll down to the build section. And if you've installed the Zap plugin successfully, you should now have a new build step called execute Zap. But before we go ahead and do that, let's actually run the target application that we want to run a scan against. So I'm going to select execute shell. And in here, I'm going to paste in the Docker command to run my target application. So I'm going to be running a Docker command where my application, which is intentionally healthcare application, is going to be running on port 9000. Now, by default, Jenkins will not have the permissions to be able to execute or run Docker commands. And if you want Jenkins to be able to run Docker commands, then you will have to add the Jenkins user to the Docker group. Now, this is something I would typically not recommend because this is definitely not a security best practice. If a user is allowed to be able to run docker commands that particular user can potentially break out of the container and even gain access to the server that's going to be running jenkins so this can be pretty dangerous so i would highly recommend that you check in with your devops team before you go ahead and start configuring something like this since this is only an example i'm going to be running my target application right here but ideally you would have a staging environment somewhere else or you would probably spin up a new environment on some other server and then you can go ahead and use this i'm also going to give in a sleep command of 10 seconds so that i can be sure that my application container is actually up and running so once this is done i'm going to add a new build step and this time, I'm going to select execute Zap from the drop down menu. Under the admin configurations, I'm just going to leave these to default. So the host is going to be localhost and the port is going to be port 1890. And this is something that we have already configured in configure system. And when it comes to startup, it is going to be a Java JDK and I'm going to select inherit from job. So I'm going to leave this as default as well. And under installation method, I'm going to select system install Zap directory. And the environment variable is going to be Zap proxy home, which we had previously configured as well. Now under the Zap home directory, I'm going to set the path again. So I'm going to set where my zap currently is, which is going to be in varlib Jenkins zap 2.9. I can also use Zap Proxy Home, which is the environment variable if I want to. And under session management, I'm going to select persist session. Now, this time the file name is going to be the default template that is already provided by Zap. So I'm going to paste the file name right here. And if you want to verify to see if this file actually exists, you can go back to your lab and you can simply list out all the files in the templates session directory. And you can see that there is one template for OWASP juice shop and there's one more default template which we are going to be using and now under session properties for the context name just to make things easy i'm just going to give it the url of my target application which is going to be localhost 9000 since we are going to be running this on the same server and for include in context i'm going to give it the same url as well now under the attack mode the starting point of our application is going to be localhost 9000 again and i'm going to select spider scan if you would like you can also select active scan and if you have multiple policies that 
data have been configured already you can select a policy as well but by default it's going to go ahead and use the default policy but in this video we're not going to be running active scan so i'm going to skip that and finally under the finalize run section i'm going to go ahead and select generate reports so when it comes to the file name i'm going to make a minor modification to the file name i'm going to append the build id as well. So for every build that's going to take place, it's going to have a unique build ID and the file name is going to have the build ID as well so that it's easy for me to trace back to that particular Jenkins job based on the build ID. And for the format, I'm going to select both XML and HTML. And once this is done, now I'm going to add an additional build step and this time it's going to be execute shell again. And in this step, I'm going to stop my target application container from running continuously. So I'm going to just run the command docker stop vcare which is application container that we were previously running and i'm going to remove it as well so once all of this is done we can now scroll down to the post build actions and we can archive all of the artifacts and again under post build actions we are going to go ahead and publish the html report so i'm going to go ahead and add the report and this report is currently going to be in the reports directory and the index pages is going to be the jenkins vulnerability report with our build ID and a report title. I'm just going to rename this to Zap report. So with that complete, I'm going to apply it and save it. And now we can go ahead and execute this build. So while this is happening, if you want to go ahead and look at the console output, you can click right here. So as we can see, it's currently pulling in our application container image. And once this is done, it's going to run our application. It's going to wait for 10 seconds for our application to initialize. And once all of that is complete, it is then going to initialize Zap, run a complete complete spider scan, gender the reports and it's going to complete the build. So as we can see, our application container is currently up and running and soon enough, it should start our zap process as well. So it's going to initialize zap. Zap is now currently up and running and the spider scan has now been initialized and it's completed as well. So with that complete, it has successfully generated both our HTML and XML reports right here. And finally, we're going to stop our application container from running and the HTML publisher plugin has published our HTML report successfully as well so you can come back here look at the html report and as you can see it has found a few medium and low level severity issues that are currently in our application if you found this video useful please consider subscribing to the channel and like the video and don't forget to follow us on linkedin and twitter for this sort of content and updates if you are looking to learn more about cloud native security kubernetes security devsecops appsec automation threat modeling and a whole lot more Go get a subscription for amazing courses and a ton of hands-on labs on appsecengineer.com.